Hey traders, my morning video. We're getting really nice green upticks this morning. Uh, you know, some people call it a short squeeze. <coughs> but like I had mentioned yesterday, the, the by far the most important thing to watch in these markets, that's your ES futures. <coughs> Basically 60% of the order flow is what's happening, uh, happens in the SPY. And uh, so basically what I was seeing yesterday, we came down to that 50% FIB fan and plus a uh, weekly volume point of control and found responsive buying in yesterday's session. This is a significant low, in my opinion, for these markets. This is a must-hold area for bullish or bearish scenario going forward here. Uh, basically, we came all the way down to the, to the edge of uh, disaster, in my opinion, and uh, uh, we're now finally catching some a financial buying situation going forward here in the markets, potentially. So just keep this one on your watch. Uh, basically, this area right here has been rejected so far, and even though we are catching this rally in the markets, we are still having trouble getting up above that 2856 area okay this is the critical uh line in the sand for the bulls to start adding to long positions in my opinion the 2856 area so even with this little pop this morning this is probably short the pops still scenario uh going uh into the open if we hold out up here near these highs so keep that in mind going forward in today's session um you know if you're getting closer to the 2856 area uh, and if you, you see, you watch your, uh, 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 how the, uh, your volume profiles and stuff are building out and how the order flows are going and stuff. And if you're finding a lot of resistance at this area, you might want to get some short, um, short hedges, uh, into that resistance because this is a breakdown area, uh, so far of all of this uptrend. Okay. And it's really important to realize exactly where we are at in the markets. The markets are trying to decide if this this complete this breakdown of this entire uh, move up is justified. And they're going to be probably chopping it out this morning, trying to decide whether or not to take prices up above and try to reestablish value into these higher areas. So uh, that's just my quick analysis. The, by far the most important chart of the day. Um, and uh, keep that in mind going forward into your trading today. Let's see here, NQs. Okay, our NQs, let me turn those uh, uh, extended uh, highlights off. Why well, wouldn't you know it's not one to work? Oh, futures. I'm sorry. Did the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Highlights. There we go. Uh, make it a little bit easier to see here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> basically, this this is a this was the complete and total uh, accelerated uptrend on the cues. And if you remember, the cues on the upside were leading to the upside over the S and P's. And then on the way down, they seem to be leading to the downside because we completely, as of yesterday morning, we were breaking down past uh, the uh, FIB fan lows. And that's why I was showing some relative weakness in the queues. And I was concerned about what was going on yesterday. So, uh, well, it looks like my platform's freezing, of course. One second here. Okay, some quick takeaways from uh, this chart pattern. We have weekly value down here, <clears throat> which we have not even come back into. So basically, we're trying to hold the pattern above our moving average, 200-day moving average. And uh, so this right here is actually what they're trying to use as the beginning of the pattern in the breakout, okay? So it's something to keep in mind here. We came right down into this beginning of this pattern as of yesterday, found some responsive buying. We are getting back above our 50% uh, FIB fan. So this is constructive for a potential continuation move to the upside today. And uh, so that's really important. The highest beta names are in our technology. And this is a responsive, a potential responsive buy zone. 
uh, for our text. So I wanted to see an opening price above this 50% uh, Fib fan before I even considered uh, any type of uh, uh, long positioning into the open. So, uh, but uh, just keep that in mind. You know, the S and P still are not in the all clear yet, and um, so that is really important to note going forward here. But this is a digestive area uh, for price that we've ran into before. And, uh, you know, we are getting back above that other swing low. Uh, you know, we're right back inside of this other swing low area uh, as of so far this morning. So basically, we had yesterday breaking down out of, this, of the swing low area. And to this morning, we we're trying to push back up inside. So really important to see how order flow goes first thing this morning. Uh, very, very important to determine um, whether to get calls or puts on the open. Uh, the S&Ps are telling us so far it's still safer to buy the puts on the open. So just keep that in mind going forward in your trading. In our Russell, uh, believe it or not, uh, these are oversold areas, have been historic oversold areas, <clears throat> but you got a double whammy on your Russell. You have interest rates just completely getting destroyed. And with that happening, uh, it's it's destroyed the regional banks. And then plus what you had happen with crude yesterday, you have the double whammy on our uh, Russell. So, uh, but basically value for, all the way back to 2018 has been at the 1406 area. And we are still trading at a discount to that. So keep that in mind. We don't have any weekly or any monthly value uh, all the way back till uh, mid-2018 or 2017, mid-2017. Any type of mid-value uh, built out at these price points. So we are going back several years uh, for this uh, breakdown to find any type of uh, responsive uh, levels at this, at this point in time. So keep that in mind going forward here. It looks like uh, we are trying to get a short squeeze this morning and uh, reversion back up to the 1406 area does seem uh, like a strong possibility going into the rest of this week. Okay, we are finally catching a reprieve in these bond markets. And uh, one thing about I didn't notice uh, on these bonds, you you just don't typically have gaps on these bonds. And we had basically a gap that had to be filled yesterday. And we are getting a responsive uh, sell signal in these bonds off that gap. And that's helping drive equities higher. We're not getting nearly the drive we need to uh, on a relative basis. Because if you think about it, you know, the, bond, the markets have sold off a lot steeper than what we are getting at a um, kickback on the bonds. So there's still relative strength versus the markets here on the bonds. Uh, just keep that in, in notes. But we have had a technical correction in the bonds, in my opinion, at this point. We actually need, uh, in my opinion, we're probably going to need to break this next uh, FIB level, the uh, 137.045. Uh, we need a breakdown of that before it's going to start signaling an all clear to the long side um, in the uh, financials. And uh, so right here is just basically a technical reset on the uh, bonds, in my opinion, uh, filling that gap. And, uh, you know, it's still too early to say which way these uh, the bonds are going to go in today's session. Really nice uptick in the ES futures going forward here. And look at a 7.36% bid in the crude oil. And uh, that is quite important impressive um considering the massive sell-off so we're basically uh it's still inside of uh yesterday's trading range on the crude oil but it was nice to see a nice little responsive uh you know it's hard to believe that is a 7.42 percent uh move on the crude um uh, and nice little short squeeze going on here in the crude oil space um so and it does look like uh, a little bit of volumes coming in so far uh, still, a, still a little bit anemic volumes, but something to keep on your watch going forward here. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not that bullish uh, on the crew, of course, but we should be seeing uh, some nice responsive bounces this morning in the XLE 
uh, energy space uh, XLP, and uh, that will be supportive for the Russell and um, and help. Uh, I know it's a lot smaller section of the markets, but every little all these oversold bounces, you know, every little bit of it helps the markets in general. So keep that in mind going forward here in today's session. Uh, and then on the other futures, uh, gold, gold selling off. So that's something uh, also to import. So basically, uh, they're, they're <clears throat> weak hands at these heightened levels in the market for these uh, gold. Uh, uh, $1,800 was my actual upside target for gold. We managed to cross over seventeen hundred today, uh, yesterday. So uh, just keep this one on watch. Uh, this uh, Fib fan, if you notice here, has been acting as on this whole thing up is acting as uh, not Fib fan. Uh, pivot point has been acting as support on the way up. I think we are starting a breakdown in the gold um, for the past two weeks. We are actually getting signs here. We might be getting a breakdown of this pivot point today so keep that in mind uh uh yeah we're getting quite mixed ticks here uh you know so that's something to keep on watch uh, uh that's leaning to the bullish side of the markets in general in my opinion okay the top volume leaders so far this morning it is about 4 30 in the morning so it's still early but this gives you a little bit of initial at reaction on what the markets are looking to buy this morning uh, AMD tops the list. Uh, we are above value from yesterday on AMD here. Uh, so keep that in mind going forward. Uh, I had that in one minute, I'm sorry. Five minute. But uh, we are right here getting close to yesterday's highs on the trading for AMD. But to mo note, uh, I've got my, I use my 100 SMA with the uh, overnight uh, turned off. Extended hours turned off to get a, a good read on my MA here. And we're at 46, so we're still behind, below that 100 SMA. I, I prefer for a bullish tape to have uh, big pop-ups like this above uh, this, the 100 SMA for continuation patterns. So that's why I'm a little, leaning a little bit more bearish after looking at AMD on this pop for the open going forward here. Uh, we're getting a responsive short squeeze in Caribbean cruises. It's just totally decimated. Um, we're still into yesterday's value uh, underneath our MAs on, um, uh, see here, we're at what? 2382. So we're above our MAs, uh, above our pivot point and our other M MAs so far this morning, but and we're outside the primary downtrend. So this is an oversold bounce, in my opinion, for um, Carnival uh, today. Uh, basically, you just look at these standard deviations. It was way outside of, uh, you know, we were uh, more than a two standard deviation uh, breakdown going into today, into today, and we're catching a little bit of a short squeeze to get us back into uh, uh, be, uh, be get us back inside the two standard deviation move on this still a very bearish pattern um uh, and so we're 2382 we are above this is this is one of those that's uh, marking right at the 100 sma already on the open this morning so that is one that uh, you have to keep on watch thinking that um there could be some short squeeze happening uh, on this one today and maybe some significant continuation to the upside uh, to get back inside of this uh, range. Uh, we are right now trading right on the edge of it for a responsive bid all the way back to the 2485 area. Okay, those are patterns I really don't like to trade. I'd rather trade stocks in an uptrend um, for any type of a re relief rally, uh, d discounted stocks an uptrend uh apple so far this morning catching a bid uh we are all the way up to 277.20 uh it's showing up above yesterday's value so we're right here at the day highs on apple uh we are above the 100 sma on the open here looking really nice uh for a continuation pattern 
This is something that I definitely want to see uh, going into the open of any trading every day. And we are going to be above our MA, uh, our 8, uh, 21, and our VWAP to open the session. So keep that in mind going forward here. We're seeing some bullish indications on Apple, uh, despite the already uh, strong bid so far this morning in Apple. Uh, Bank of America. Okay. Uh, still inside of value so far this morning. Uh, the bonds are coming off a little bit, so we're we're still trapped inside of yesterday's trading range on Bank of America. Uh, like I said, that was just like a gap feel reaction on the bonds. So kind of leaning to the downside on the uh, the put action here. And if we were really having a strong pop, I would have liked to see an Apple as the strongest volume for today, and we're not. You know, that was the third third one down on the volume board so far this morning on Apple. So, yeah, the pattern looks better on Apple, but the volume is still relatively light. So we have to reassess that when the market opens in the morning. And if you look here, uh, what's going on, you know, we're getting that, catching that bid in the markets. And you have to really put it in context of what's going on here. You know, we are uh, at a... More than a three standard, we're at a three standard deviation breakdown at trend line support on uh, Bank of America. So catching a bid here, typically you, you always find when, they, when you have a combination of three standard deviation and trend line, it makes sense to have some sort of a short squeeze at this point in time uh, for Bank of America. So with the 2316 area, that's going to put price... Uh, uh, right above the 100 SMA going into the open today on uh, Bank of America. So this could be a buy or a short, all depending on how uh, the bonds are faring near the open for today. Okay. Facebook, like I said yesterday, I think it's a broken pattern, but it is catching a bid today until it proves me otherwise. So uh, we're 175.20. So that puts us back up here. Um, <laughs> we are above our 100 SMA, okay? But my line in the sand, like I had mentioned in my other video, uh, let me think here. Yeah, 175.20. Uh, I'm going to have to expand this out, I think. Yeah, no, right here it is. Uh, the 175.40 area. That's where the bull bear cross, in my opinion, is for Facebook. So this, in my opinion, is still a shortable uh, pop for Facebook going into the open. So a um, lot of risk to the downside still, um, despite the uh, short squeeze we're seeing this morning. So just keep that one in, in mind going forward here. Like I said, I think it's still a broken pattern, but it is uh, showing some a little bit of constructive uh, pop here in the market. So... That is something to hang your hat on going forward. And then Gilead, uh, catching a nice little bit this morning. Uh, we're up to uh, uh, 7677. That puts us right back up. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to fan this out for a second to get a look at this one. Okay, we had a nice little downgrade in Gilead yesterday. Well, it's coming right back up here, back testing this fib fan. For Gilead, uh, if you've noticed, it's had long periods of trading around that line in the past. And this is a bullish chart with all the corona stuff going on here. So responsive buys up, up above and beyond this line are very uh, likely. But we did have a downgrade yesterday, so keep that in mind going forward here in the markets. Uh, lower volume, so, you know, that's something also, you know, to uh, keep in mind here. You know, um, you know, I would have liked to see in stronger volume so far this morning to support prices at this range. Okay, and then we have, well, I have GE, but I don't really trade that one. Um, uh, we're at value area highs this morning, uh, coming right off support. Uh, we're at 855, so we're right on that 100 SMA over here. Okay, so resistance, we're hitting resistance right off the bat. Um, so uh, it is also 
a three standard deviation breakdown. So uh, no, it makes sense to have a responsive bid on that one as well, off support. Oh yeah, GE, American Airlines. Uh, that's more like a four standard deviation breakdown. It's just absolute carnage in the airlines. Uh, no, we are holding the one. Okay, two. Yeah, we're we're hovering between the t uh we're hovering right along the two standard deviation breakdown here on uh American Airlines. We are crossing over the 50% down bib fan uh, and over the 100 SMA uh, thinking uh, we're actually seeing some relative uh, strength happening here in American Airlines we have not seen in the, uh, since the beginning of this move down way back uh, you know uh, last Thursday so we are actually catching a short squeeze in here it's not all clear uh, until we get back above the uh, this uh, fib line here, we're at 1550. So that's you know this is just a responsive uh, short squeeze. It's still not uh, a turn from the bottom at all. We're still firmly inside the downtrend on American Airlines. Uh, another one I had mentioned BA. I was talking about S and P's really had to hold up the markets here. Bank of America or, or uh, Boeing is catching a nice. Uh, you know, response to short squeeze in a downtrend, a well-established downtrend. We're at 237, uh, 239. So we're, we're, we're trading right on that 100 SMA break uh, potential. Like so many of these others, we're just coming right into that resistance, uh, getting enough of a short squeeze to get us into that resistance for the open. So uh, something to hang your, put your hat on and uh, see what's going to, going to happen today. We are right near a three standard deviation move on this uh, breakdown uh, as of close. So we're basically getting a responsive short squeeze to reset things for potentially uh, going into today's session. But we are still firmly inside of yesterday's values, so you can't read too much into it. Still uh, quite a bearish chart going forward, uh, in my opinion. Amazon. Didn't hit my down target yesterday, so I missed the trade. Uh, we are actually marking prices above yesterday's highs. Important to note that uh, relative strength here in Amazon. Strongest chart I've seen so far in my little thing, but it is on light volume. So you have to uh, put your hat on that one as well. Above the 100 SMA. Uh, so that's going to put us where... Uh, we are still, we still have resistance above the eight, 1880 area. Um, you know, uh, yeah, we're right up here into the resistance. We're not, we're not, we're not even back inside of these other FIB fans yet. But it, it is constructive to see what's happening here. Um, so just keep that one on watch as maybe a, this one here would be a leader if we were going to uh, go to the upside in the markets, in my opinion. Uh, so the 1880, what was it? 1866 area puts us right right up through here so uh, we're between a one and two standard deviation uh, area on uh, Amazon going into today's session and Disney another one completely rat uh, ravaged in this market catching a little bit of a short squeeze um, just trying to get back into value still bearish downtrend still well intact so everything that's Pretty much everything that's this been car in carnage, the downtrends are still intact. So you can't really read too much bullish into this market, even with this uh, morning pop. So that's unfortunate, but true. And uh, Google 1248. Uh, so, you know, it's still still within yesterday's trading range. Just a little bit of a short squeeze. In my opinion, this is a, more of a broken chart like Facebook. You know, the, both of those companies are media companies. So under a lot of pressure right now in these companies. So uh, just keep that one, these on watch going forward here. Uh, it all depends on a lot of uh, the ratings coming in today and uh, whether or not uh, these things can hold up. Um, so, you know, just catching just a little bit of a short squeeze in that one as well. 
And seeing what's happening on the SPY and the Qs and everything, look at these low volumes that we're going in. You know, I mean, this is just absolutely total anemic. There's just no buying or selling pressure whatsoever here in this morning session. And keep in mind, yesterday on the big sell-off, that was on below average volume on the sell-off as well. You know, and uh, so keep that, you know, you know, just keep that all that stuff in mind going forward here, you know. You don't want to see below, you know, basically if you have major sell-offs, you want it on above average volume. And if you're not getting above average volume, that suggests that, you know, the the uh, shorts are going to be have some weak hands going forward here. So, um, you know, I'm leaning more to the bullish side in these markets just on the on the lack of volume is telling me that the selling pressures uh, uh, having troubles pushing prices lower at this point. So just keep that in mind. Uh, on light volume, you, you generally do not add puts on lighter volume days. You know, you just do not, it's a very, very risky thing to do. And that's exactly the way that we're setting up so far this morning. Okay, thanks a lot. Like the video if you like it. Please leave comments if you're seeing stuff that I'm absolutely not seeing. But I am still, I have a lean to the bull side, despite the fact that the charts are still showing uh, many, many bearish patterns the ones that are showing volume, volume this morning they were short squeezes uh but my main thing is the cues seem to be repairing themselves and the the uh, the uh s and p's seem to be holding some critical support areas um uh, you know where you can start accumulating uh longer term positions in my opinion at these price points so thanks a lot and i will see you in the trading room and oh i am uh, because we have had to pop in these markets this morning, I am ratcheting down my positioning. I was going five and 10 positions yesterday. I will be going like two and four positions. If I go uh, take a long side or a short side, I'm going to be significantly bringing in my positioning for uh, day trades, uh, just for the simple fact that uh, uh, I don't want to be uh, rocked out of my trades in today's session. Thanks a lot.